come to work every single day. Attention passengers, we've now reached our destination. Hey, what's going on leaders? We are here at the University of Southern California, all the way from New York City. Like this is a special place. Like if you played football in the early 2000s, you know, Reggie Bush, Matt Leinhart, you're talking about national champions. Like they were a huge part. USC was a huge part of why I even chose to play sports at a high level, right? So I'm here getting ready to pour into the student athletes at USC's campus. I just want to say I'm so excited because the Black Student Athlete Summit is going to be a game changer and we get to kick it off, right? Like we are the opening keynote and it is going to be a life-changing session. Hey, Trojans, student athletes all over, I hope you guys are ready to take the lead on your life legacy and leadership. Let's get it. I'm so excited to be here. I'm super big on gratitude. Uh, so I just wanna say thank you to the BSA. Thank you uh, for you guys for just showing up because there are a bunch of different rooms that you could be in. Um, and it is my I have the opportunity to serve you guys through storytelling. One of the things that I really want to just address uh, the elephant in the room, right? Because we have some current student athletes, we have some former student athletes, and then we have some athletes in this room that they believe that the sport that they play is their purpose. See, because me, if there's one thing that I know about maybe 12 years ago, if I was sitting in your seats right now, I knew for a fact that I was going to the NFL to play football. Like it was a fact and it was a fact because of the environment that I grew up in. See, like I grew up in a situation where like the fancy word for it is low socioeconomical environment, a.k.a. poverty, a.k.a. the mud, a.k.a. that situation where you watch your mother struggle to pay bills your entire life. See, like when you live in that environment, what it does to you is it shifts something in you. It makes it a non-negotiable. The reason why I was going to the league because it was a non-negotiable. Just want to be honest with you. It was a non-negotiable because I knew what drugs and alcohol did to my father. He womanized my mother. I knew exactly what having a nine to five work in a city job would do. It would make me have to struggle to pay bills. I didn't want that. So I said it's a non-negotiable. Now, the issue that I have that some of us in this room may have that led to me, if you asked yourself, well, why was this gentleman suicidal? Well, I was suicidal because I attached my entire identity to the sport of football. Like, what does that mean when you attach your entire identity to a sport? What it means is Jeremiah Brown, if you ask me who I was, I'm a football player, not a future father, not a future husband not a future change agent. See, now that's the big bag that I should have been chasing because my environment forced me to think that the only bag that I needed to go after was this bag of money. But I was wrong. And as a result, I found myself playing in front of the Tom Brady's of the world, signing a three-year deal worth $1.5 million. Like I was in a room, like guys, I was in a room with safeties from Alabama, USC, Louisville, right? Like some, some, some top dogs in the room. I went to Wagner College. Now, I know if I said by raising hands, does anyone know where Wagner College is? We might get maybe one or two, if any. Anybody know where Wagner College is? Right? Probably because they might have recruited you, right? Now, I was in a room where the, the odds were stacked against me. And because I attached my entire identity to this sport, I found myself playing against these great athletes, signing a million autographs to putting on an orange apron, checking into my shift at Home Depot. Now, how does that happen? It happens because every single educator that looked me in my eyes and told me I was more than an athlete brushed them off. Every single individual that looked me in my eyes and they put their hands on my shoulder and they said, young man, like I want you to work on your plan B. Young man, I, I really want you to think about what you could do outside of your sport. I couldn't see beyond it. Until this one day I found myself in aisle 16 of Home Depot, 
See, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the picture of what happens when you do not prioritize your mental health. What, what the picture I'm painting is when you do not listen to the player development people, when you do not listen to your professors and uh, the people within your village that are trying to support you, this is what happens. You're an out 16 of Home Depot and this little kid runs in and he goes, Mom, I think that's Jeremiah Brown. My heart plummets to my stomach. I'm thinking to myself, like, he's definitely not talking about me because I got this orange apron on. And he runs up to me. He says, Jeremiah Brown, like, you are my hero. Look at me in my eyes and the mother could see the water, like, literally building up in my eyes because I was emotional. I was emotional, ladies and gentlemen, because for the first time in my life, I wasn't what the world saw me as. See, for many of you, when you look in the mirror, you only see yourselves as an athlete. I'm here to tell you that that's what you do. It's not who you are. So when this young man was looking at me and the mother could see the emotion tied within me, she thought it was tied to this little boy's joy. My emotion was really tied to the fact that this young man thinks that I'm his hero when I have zero idea of who I am as a black man in this world. One of the most dangerous things in this world is to be a black man, but not alone a black man, but a black man who doesn't know his purpose in this life. Because then you easily go astray. You are subjective to all of the nuances and the easy way and, the, and making the excuses. For me in that moment, it changed my life because it made me realize that this gun that the doctor told me, see, because... In 2013, I could no longer play the game of football because I caught a concussion. I caught a concussion that forced me to end my career. The doctors would not clear me. The doctor goes, Jeremiah, if you take a revolver and you open the chamber, you put one bullet in, close it shut, spin it, put it to your head. You continue to play this game of football, it's like you're playing a game of Russian roulette. I was willing to play Russian roulette. Let me just be honest with you. I was willing to play. It was that serious for me, but I couldn't get cleared. So I found myself in the parking lot of Home Depot, really trying to ask myself this question of what's my purpose in this world? So what I'm really here to, to get you guys to walk out of here to understand is, has anybody in this room ever been told to trust the process? Right? Raise your hand if you've been told to trust the process, right? Got three minutes. Trust the process. Been told that my entire life, didn't know what it meant. It's almost taboo. See, I grew up in a situation where mental health was literally taboo. Like, we don't talk about our emotions. We don't talk about me actually feeling sad. So I didn't feel like, not only did I not feel like I could go anywhere, I didn't have the social emotional tools and awareness to go somewhere. Didn't know what I was needed to ask for help for. See, what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you on what trusting the process really means. So anytime someone tells you to trust the process, anytime someone tells you that you are more than an athlete, I need you to do these things. I need you to, one, ask them, why am I more? It has to go beyond just telling our babies that they're more. Ask them, why am I more? And then when they say, well, what do you want to be in life? Say respectfully, that's the wrong question, miss or ma'am. The question you should be asking me is what problems do I want to solve because I am a solution. Can I look at you? If there's anybody in this room that has ever gone through some level of depression, some level of anxiety, some level of suicide ideations, I just want to plant a seed in each and every one of you because this topic on suicide is that real. I need each and every one of you to understand that you are something and you are a solution to a problem that exists in this world. So you're going to leave here still unclear, but you're going to leave here looking for problems that you're going to attach your skill set to. Because every successful person in this world that's getting big bags of money, that have big bags of generational wealth and love. See, because you thought that I was always this polished up. No, 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 no. Like I wasn't. I'm a father. I'm a husband, I'm a graduate, a black student athlete graduate. 
My legacy matters. Your legacy matters. So when they say this notion of trusting the process, trusting the process means this. Ladies and gentlemen, never get caught up in the process of getting the bag or the prize. <coughs> Always get caught up in the person that you need to become. Trusting the process is more about who you become than it is about what you obtain in this world. Because success does not heal trauma. Success does not heal depression. Success does not heal much. Oh, what you drive, what you wear, it does feel good. Let me just be honest with you, it does. It does. But it doesn't heal pain. The success that each and every one of you seek in this room, it will require you to trust the process. You are looking at someone who trusted the process and as a result, I chose to continue to fight. Going from $1.5 million to Al 16 in Home Depot wasn't because I didn't have any money, it was because I was lost. I'm living my purpose. I've made more money speaking across this world than I've done in an NFL contract. But no one told me in school that I had the gift of a speaker. It was my responsibility to do the work, to become this speaker, to become this storyteller. To get you to understand that you are worth more than a jersey number or a professional contract. Because I'm going to be honest with you. You are the solution to a problem that exists in this world. And as a result, we need you to make this a better place. Our babies are counting on you. The world is counting on you. Thank you guys so much. Hey, what's going on leaders? Man, we just finished up a dynamic session at the Black Student Athlete Summit here at USC's campus. This campus is incredible. I just wanna say thank you USC, thank you BSA for allowing me to pour into your student athletes. Just the feedback was just so encouraging and I know I'm in the right place and I just wanna say thank you for allowing me to just come in and just add value to the great work happening, the Black Student Athlete Summit. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm so excited for what's to come. Leaders, let's get it.